Earlier this month, Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, went on a controversial media tour where he repeatedly doubled down on white supremacists and anti-Semitic comments, even daring one corporate partner to drop him because of it. Well, that partner, Adidas, and they have served, severed, I should say, ties with the Grammy winner and fashion designer. So is The Gap, Foot Locker, Balenciaga, Vogue, even TJ Maxx. His management company and record label have dropped him as well. This week, it's also been reported that years ago, the artist said he admired Adolf Hitler in an unused portion of an interview with TMZ. Fears that his comments would embolden others who were confirmed when a group performing a Nazi salute dangled a sign saying he was right over a Los Angeles freeway. Well, the controversy has stirred strong feelings in both the Jewish and black communities, especially here in Chicago. David Goldenberg, Midwest Regional Director of the Anti-Defamation League, and Karen Freeman Wilson, CEO of the Chicago Urban League, are here. Thank you both for joining us today. And David, we were saying this has been quite a week, hasn't it? It has been, right? <laughs> We've had reports in Chicago of record, of record uh, hate crimes targeting black and Jewish communities and other communities uh, who are marginalized. We've had uh, the city of Chicago unable to fire a police officer who has known ties to the Proud Boys. And then we have this report that you're talking about right now. So it's been a busy week in the world of extremism. Karen, a lot of people follow Ye. So what does that mean when he's saying these anti-Semitic re remarks and saying he pro reportedly uh, loved Hitler? What does that do to those people who follow him, all of the people in the black community? I think it's really a sad day. Uh, I think it's evidence first that um, he has some challenges, mental challenges. Because if you think about the fact that he is doing things that are clearly against his own self-interest, but when you Think about the influence that he still carries, particularly among young blacks. And he is not only anti-Semitic, but he's anti-black. You know, when you embrace white nationalism, you are rejecting yourself, your own people. And for them to continue to possibly embrace him is concerning because we we are working every day, David and I, our organizations, to really ensure that we have good relationships. And what, how does that affect the relationships, you think, when he goes off on like that? Well, I'd say this. If we didn't have the type of relationship that we have, we can't have the important and necessary conversations right. that we have to have. Now, we, we know you two have good relationships, <laughs> but what about the communities? Because that's what really matters right now. Well, I think because of our leadership mm -hmm. and because of the leadership of others, the communities are acknowledging, yes, there are challenges, but we are better and, quite frankly, more impactful together. But what I would also add, too, there is he's not the first to espouse anti-Semitism or white supremacist ideology, and unfortunately, he probably won't be the last. Mm -hmm. And so in many ways, what we're looking toward is what's the response, what's the reaction? What's the reaction from individuals, whether it be individuals and leaders like the two of us of mm -hmm. different organizations? What's the conversation like around the dinner table? What's the conversation in the corporate space, right? And so how do companies respond, right? We saw Adidas and other companies that yeah. said, listen, we're gonna put people before profits, and that's an important thing. That's an important message to what could happen to others in the future. But that's really sort of what can you do as an individual, what can we do as organizations, and what can we do in a broader societal way? Speaking of society, you talked about how he's been anti-black in so many ways. Should the black community like form some type of negativity toward him because of this? Well, you know, I think that it's important to embrace people who have challenges like he does mm -hmm. with love. Now, I think at the same time, we have to hold him accountable. Yes. Just as companies have, just as the Jewish community has, we have to hold him accountable. And quite frankly, I think we're in the best position to do that. So you believe that maybe they should come out more and say about maybe other stars, black stars? Absolutely. I think we need to say that this behavior, this conversation, and some have already done it, but we need to ensure that we do it consistently. What do we do right now 
I mean, as a community, as, as you know, people holding out signs, yay is right, and things like that. What do we do? Do we, do we want, you say you want our leaders to come out yeah. and kind of denounce this. Look, I think what you're talking about here is the dropping of banners by a white supremacist group in the four, above the 405 out in California, right? Yes. And it shows the impact that this type of language, that these types of words can have in, shall we say, the real world. I mean, right after the shooting in Buffalo, where a supermarket in the heart of the black community was targeted and individuals mur were murdered, Karen and I co-hosted uh, a anti-hate table right. where we brought together over 30 representatives representing just about every community, and we asked them, what are you most concerned about? And their response was, my community could be next. And so there's this understanding that this type of hateful ideology, hate speech, can lead to real life actions by individuals who are inspired by this type of hate and ideology. Would you say that the last administration, and we know that Kanye Ye did meet with the last administration, kind of made it more okay? to say things like this? Oh, absolutely. I'd go even further and say that the last administration really gave a license for people to provide their unfiltered talk and action. And so as a consequence, you see people who have uh, attacked others, who have spoken against others just because of what they look like, who they worship, how they worship. And, and do you see the same? Would you say the same, David? Absolutely. I don't usually argue with Karen whenever she's <laughs> right. But what I will say is this too: is that when you think about the current political dynamic, the loss of political and de decency in politics these days, or just civil discourse, when you think about access through technology, hate symbols and hate speech, where we have kids, I say, experimenting with hate more than ever. And then when you see sort of just the basic ignorance, especially coming out of COVID, where at a time where Karen and I just saw each other and we just said, you know, I don't think I've seen you in person in, yeah. or, in a year and a half. Yeah. And so that type, those types of right. conversations, those types of relationships lead to ignorance, lead to a well, lack of understanding. Things have definitely changed over the pandemic. Thank you both for joining us and giving us that insight. Let's hope things get a little bit better. It's always good to All be right. with you, yes. Michael. Absolutely. Thank you. You can find the Anti-Defamation League at ADL.org and you can find the Chicago Urban League at CHIUL.org.